G'day! Hi Groovers, this is the one spot of the camera today. I might get tilted up when we've got some stovetop action. Here come the beautiful people. Erin, hello, from Huonville. Great weather for this. Yes, we're doing some wintry cooking. And I cook all the time and I figure I might as well go live in the shitty kitty kitchen and show you some really easy peasy affordable recipes um, which are just perfect on a wintry tazzy day. Hi Blissful. This is my second live today and there'll be a third one because we're doing batshit tonight as well. Um, but we've got a couple of things we're making today and they're both very easy. They're both Donna Hay recipes for those of you who haven't encountered Donna Hay, I highly recommend you subscribe to her website. She's got shitloads of recipes on there. But a lot of bloggers also cook her stuff and the links to both recipes that are in the description are both from people who've made these dishes as well and blogged about it. So if you're inspired to do either of them, um, certainly check out the links because you'll find all the ingredients. But the one thing with Donna Hay is she keeps her ingredients to a minimum. She's very much a seasonal cook, a chef, and she also um, makes really delicious, affordable stuff using fairly basic ingredients that you probably have already got in your pantry or your fridge, or your fridge, or your spice bucket, or whatever. So yeah, that's what we're up to today. A couple of recipes. We're gonna be doing a chicken and bacon pie, and we're also gonna be doing a baked mozzarella and uh, tomato which is really delicious and it's a yummy thing that you can have for lunch if you feel like having something a little bit different than you know a toasted sandwich how often do we do a cheese and tomato toasted sandwich this is just another fancy way of doing it but it's really easy and it's also yummy to do after dinner like when you, you often bring out a cheese platter so this little baked dish is great for that or if you're struggling to think of something to make for dinner and you've got some mozzarella or some bocconcini in your fridge and a tin of tomatoes and some crisp breads of some description or fresh bread, whatever, you're sorted. Hey again, AJ. You need some meal spiration. You're listening while working. These are both super easy recipes. Um, that being said, we'll probably still be live for a couple of hours because we all start chatting. I'm just peeling some potatoes at the moment because these chicken pies, chicken and bacon pies, do not have pastry. You probably saw in my thumbnail, they are topped with potato. And I'm going to pop them under the grill at the end to get them really crispy. But it's just a nice variation and you don't have to worry about making pastry or buying pastry. You can just get some spuds. Any sort of um, starchy sort of potato will do. These are Sebagos, but Tasmania's got so many different types of potatoes. You're currently eating a cheese, onion and tomato toast, you see? There you go. Next time you'll be like, well, I've got all the ingredients. The one I'm doing, the baked one, doesn't have onion in it, but um, you could certainly chuck onion in it as well. But I quite like them for lunches. Sort of more like a little hot, flavoursome dip that you just bake in the oven and away you go. Um, I'm only going to make one serving today today because <laughs> i'm catching up with people tomorrow and i'll use the rest of it and do a larger dish of it for them when they come here after we've been dark mofoing i think we'll all feel like a nice hot baked cheese and tomato dip so i'm just peeling the spuds hey deb how are you gorgeous perfect day to be indoors cooking right So yeah, I'm just peeling the spurs, and then some people have those um, gadgets that do really thin slicing and the, I mean, I've got an attachment for my KitchenAid and it's the shittiest attachment ever that's meant to do julienning and all that sort of shit. I'm actually getting rid of it because it's crap, um, but I'm just going to thinly slice with a knife. So these are the little spuds that are going to go on top, but I thought I'd just get these out of the way first. 
And then we'll get on with the cooking and the assembling and the baking and all that fun stuff. Are you doing some cooking today, Deb? Now for the next stuff. Yeah, another Taswegian. It's awesome, isn't it? So yeah, I mean those little lumpy bits on the end aren't really worth doing, but I'm just going to thinly slice these spuds to be the topping of my pies. I raced down to the shops and bumped into, as you always do. <laughs> Bumped into two friends at the shop and then had a really long chat with the girl at the post office. I picked up my new Ugg boots. Every 10 years I get a new pair of Uggs. They last 10 years. I mean, I changed the inner soles halfway through. So I bought a second pair of inner soles for swapping out in five years' time. But yeah, so I was chatting to the girl at the post office. I was faffing around, basically. You need about 350 grams of potato. I probably should have weighed at the start because I don't, I don't think I'm going to need all of these. Yeah, so two are 350 grams. So I'm going to save these. They will get used in something else. Probably some, I'll do some fries or something again when we get back from Dark Mofo, some yummy hot food. Just put that in the compost bowl. So two potatoes. This recipe makes four pies, but you can make one big one. You can make four little ones. You can make two big ones it really depends on who you're feeding and the other beauty of these is once you've baked them you can freeze them straight like into your, if you use a pie tin that can be frozen like the enamel ones that I love you can just um, cover them in glad wrap and then I still put them inside a ziploc bag as well to keep the freezer burn out and you can just get home one night you don't feel like cooking you've got chicken pies in the freezer ready to go just whack them up and whack them in the oven, heat them up, and away you go. Now, these are for dinner tonight, um, and I will be doing um, some zucchini and some... What else will I be doing? I've got some fennel. I might put some zucchini and fennel and tomato together and do a little sort of twist on a ratatouille. But you can serve these on their own, or you can do some green beans or some peas, like whatever you want, whatever veggies you guys like. So they're sliced up nice and thin and they'll be the topping for later. Done. Put them to one side. Let's get on with the pie fillings. Yay for someone knowing an actual name of a potato. <laughs> New brushed. Tasmania is home to so many potato varieties and Kennebecs are your favourite. I love um, pink eyes and Dutch creams. They're my favourites. That was your dog stepped on a bed voice. <laughs> dog stepped on a bee. Everyone's appreciated here. You're right. Um, so I don't need my I don't need my co spray in the shot, but I was coing earlier. Someone commented on my beautiful shiny stovetop. It's all about the co, guys. We love the co, don't we, AJ? So let's start making the filling. Super, super, super easy recipe, and I think you'll all enjoy it. We want to preheat the oven to 180, so I'm going to chuck that on now. Sunny, my um, sous chef, is running around the kitchen. She wants to play. Sunny, what are you doing? Are you going to help me make these pies? No, probably not. Um, so we, we're going to be doing some stuff in the frying pan first, but I'm not heating that up just yet. I'll get all this stuff prepped. First thing you want to chop up an onion, pink eyes and duck, we've about it exactly, Deb. Although Erin in the Hewan, she's all about the cannabis. But we, we are absolutely spoilt for choice when it comes to 
potatoes in this island, on this island. There is no denying that. Use my bigger knife. I love cooking in winter. I love being, I love cooking anyway, but I love winter foods. There's always carbs that enter the picture. Whoops. I love doing keto in summer. I really should have another crack at keto for a couple of months. It always makes me feel really good. But not till I get a few carbs after doing keto in summer. Yeah, pink eyes from South Arm and Duck River Butter. Yeah, if it's not available. And also, isn't it funny, like, the price of it is so ludicrous compared to other butters, but there's no way. Although the Ashgrove butter is really nice. And Meander Valley do a great butter as well. But we've got pink eyes that grow just, I'm down near Dodgers. Well, I'm in Dodgers actually, but we've got a pink eye farm just out on the highway right near Dodgers. So that's usually where I get my pink eyes from. And if I can't get them from there, then the South Arm Spuds. I just cut myself because I'm a dickhead. Hang on a sec, Grievers. I've just got to get a band aid. You're not really cooking if you don't cut yourself. Chef's band-aids. Okay. I usually use chef's band-aids, um, but I go through them. <laughs> I go through through them pretty quickly. They're blue, so when you're cooking. Um, if they come off because they're blue, there's not much blue food unless you're Bridget Jones, Jones making blue soup, blue string soup. But yeah, usually I wear a chef band-aid, a blue one, but I'm all out of them. I'm going to have to go and grab some more from my little catering buddy. All right. Mended. Amber Heard just cut off my fingertip, everybody. Straight back into it. Yes, uh, we. I did a reaction to Amber's, well, the first 10 minutes that they've released. They're releasing another 10 minutes today. They say it's half an hour, but when once you factor in ads and everything else, no, it's not. It's 10 minutes. But um, I don't know if I bother reacting to the second part, but I will react in full. They're going to screen the whole, they're calling it an hour. Um... I will react to that when that comes out on Friday. Hey, Francesca. Hi again. We have discussed Amber's interview. We did it this morning, Erin, so feel free to have a look at that later on. Um, my finger is always flavoured for the dish, Deb. You know, you've got to put your blood, sweat and tears into all of your cooking, right? I've definitely put the blood in. Um, the other thing we're just going to chop up... Four rashes of bacon and I'm now going to turn the frying pan on to a medium heat to get that warmed up. These have already had the rinds removed which is very convenient and just cut them however you want. I mean you can do little tiny squares, I'm just doing little strips. In fact I'll do some together and I love kitchen scissors. I cook a lot with kitchen scissors for those of you who watch me you know that. I'm all about Good kitchen scissors. I've got two pairs. I'll be cutting up the chicken with them in a minute too. Way easier than chopping meat with a knife. Unless you've got a butcher who will chop it all up for you super fast with their impressive knife collection. I'm all about the all about the scissors. Yeah, check it out, Erin. Um, 
we've done, we've covered we covered the trial. I was doing nine hour broadcasts. I was getting up at ten o'clock at night and going through for eight in the morning. There was only one day that I had like an hour's break and then started work. <laughs> Every other time it was my day off, but whoever was on the stand, I wasn't going to miss it, so I did it. Won't be doing that again in a hurry though. But it was a lot of fun. So yeah, there's a lot of Depp and Heard stuff. I've also done um, a live comparing the UK trial to the one we just watched in the United States of Americano. So there's your bacon. And the last thing we're going to chuck into the pan at the start is garlic. And I went to the chop, chop. I went to the shop. I'm blaming Francesca. I'm um, not really, but um, I knew I had to get garlic and I forgot. But I've always got in my fridge a little tub of this stuff. And I can't recommend it highly enough. Just the little already minced up garlic pastes. They last a long time. And if you get stuck, or if you don't cook a lot, don't buy a whole clove of garlic and only use like a whole bulb and only use a couple of cloves. You're much better off buying these. And you can get tubes and different brands. I mean, I'm not sponsored, but this is a Coles brand. Um, but they're really good when you forget to buy some garlic at the shop. So we're just going to put about a tablespoon of olive oil. Can I turn that up a little bit? That's as good as it's going to get for watching stuff in the frying pan. But I think we all know what bacon and onion and garlic look like cooking in a frying pan, right? I don't think you're going to miss out on learning a new skill because it's not pot can. Your secret ingredient is bitterness. <laughs> Just popping in some onion to see if the pan's heated up yet. It's not quite. But if you take out all my chatting and bullshit, go on, girl. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you, gorgeous. Oh, Sunny. Gone girl just put $20 in your bank account and it's Canadian dollars. That's worth a lot more than 20 Australian dollars, you lucky girl. Thank you so much, Gone Girl. You've just made Sunny's day. Um, Alright. So we've got about a tablespoon of olive oil just heating up in our little frying pan. We're on medium heat. And we're going to chuck in the onion, the bacon... and the garlic so we've got one finely chopped onion well it's a bit randomly chopped i mean i've sliced my finger in the middle of it all so it's not consistent i'm never consistent and then with these little um already oh deb stop it <laughs> you're spoiling sunny thank you so much um this, I'm going to have to start borrowing money from Sunny soon. The way the world's going and everything's so expensive. I'll be like, um, raiding your bank account. But no, I do um, sometimes put the money from Sunny's bank account into paying for like StreamYard and any YouTube associated costs. But these little guys, um, yeah, if you don't cook a lot, you're better off buying one of these. They last for a long time and... You're not throwing out, you know, three quarters of an unused garlic bowl. But essentially one teaspoon is the equivalent of one clove of garlic. And we needed one clove, so that's that. Clean as you go. Very gorgeous indeed. You're right, Francesca. They're both lovely. Very generous. And we want to cook this for like three or four minutes. Remember these pies are going to bake in the oven a bit as well. So you don't have to cook these within an inch of their lives. Because they will continue cooking once we whack them in the oven. But sort of three to four minutes. get them cooking and while they're cooking we're going to chop up the chicken breast now the 
chicken breast, here's my scissors in action again. The chicken breast, bearing in mind it is a, um, a pie. So you want to do sort of like bite-sized pieces. I don't like tiny, I like my pie filling to be a bit chunky and chicken shrinks a little bit when you cook it too. So go a little bit bigger than the size you'd like it to be once you're eating it, if that makes sense. And we've just got two chicken breasts. And again, because this is um, stuff that I'm cooking on the channel, I try to find recipes that are simple, things that you've probably already got in the house, and if you haven't, things that are very easy to get and affordable, but also the recipes themselves. So like this is gonna make four pies, or four servings from two breasts. a messy old job and also just trim off any bits of the chook that gross you out. There's bits that gross me out. Sunny doesn't like raw chicken so she's not I mean I'll give her a piece but she doesn't usually eat it. If it was a bit of fish she would. She's a funny little thing. She loves red meat for her food couple of different types of seafood, but she's not really a fan of the chook. But any sort of chicken flavoured food I give her, she's not overly excited about it. She's actually eating it, I'm surprised. It was only a little tiny piece too. Be careful when you give your pets scraps, like bear in mind they process proteins very differently to us. So I just give a tiny piece. They don't need, you know, all the off cuts. I mean, maybe your dogs do, or your pet pig. I'm just gonna stir our bacon and onion and garlic mix. Oh, there is no finer aroma. The smell of onions and garlic cooking. I've got a friend who doesn't cook, but she, when her kids were younger than her husband, not well, he was younger too, but not like a kid. But um, she'd put butter and onion on the stove top and have it sizzling away when they got home from school and work. And they'd be like, "Oh, it smells amazing! What are you cooking us?" And then she'd be like, "We're getting delivery." No peeking, please. Oh, you've got to have a shower. Well, make sure you turn your camera off. <laughs> anyway, we're just chopping up the chicken. Don't buy readily chopped up stuff, like buy the breasts or whatever and chop it. It's worth the effort and supermarkets in particular if they sell meats and stuff that's already chopped up. Mm. Don't trust it. But they're all fairly consistent sizes and like I said, it doesn't really matter too much. Unless you're very pedantic, in which case, I don't know, get your little measuring tape out and cut them all to size, it's up to you. I can't be bothered, I have too many things I want to do with my life. Alright, so now we're going to chuck the chicken in. It'll probably be a big chunky bit that I miss, but it usually happens. I will rectify it with the scissors. And we want to brown the chicken. I'm just going to turn that fan down because it's probably annoying you guys. It's certainly annoying me thinking about it annoying you. So we're going to let the chicken brown a little bit. You don't want it to be chicken when you pop it in your pie you want it to be a bit caramelized so it's got really lovely flavor and it also with meats when you brown meats before you put them into pies and stuff casseroles whatever that little bit of browning um seals in all the flavors as well 
it's not that imperative with chicken but you want a bit of color in your food Always use wooden or plastic utensils in your pots and pans, um, otherwise you'll scratch the surfaces and you don't want scratched surfaces. So I used to watch Sandra Ruchek when she'd cook and, or Rusek, and um, she mixed things with metal spoons in metal pots and I'd be like, no! No, you ruined your cookware. Everyone's gone quiet since Francesca said she's having a shower. All the chat's frozen, one or the other. No, it was Francesca's announcement that she's off to wash her lady. I make a mess. I like messy cooking. My kitchen is like a paddling pool for small children. You just get in and go nuts. Or, you know, the table where you used to do finger painting. As my mum used to say, dull women have tiny homes. You've got to be making mess. And I love cleaning my kitchen too, so the more mess I make, the big of my cleaning project which excites me because I'm a fucking idiot. But you can probably see like from the quantity, two breasts, an onion, some bacon, there's a lot going on in that bare pan. And someone might be able to do the, oh you all moved over to her shower life, I don't blame you Deb. <laughs> Why did you come back? <laughs> Was she doing something that troubled you? Well, that's browning. We're going to be adding shortly some fun ingredients. Well, this is the funnest one. The, benef the benefits of having a boozer of a sister, hi Ange if you're watching, um, is I've always got open bottles of wine in my house, white wine and stuff like that, which for me when it comes to cooking, I never have to buy wine because there's always the remnants of something. Today we're going to be throwing in a little bit of the delightful hummingbird Margaret River from Western Australia Semillon, Semillon Blanc. It's a 2018 vintage. And we need half a cup. So there, I've done that. I've prepared that. <laughs> Just uh, off camera. We glug 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 glug. The cat was on. I normally love a red wine while I'm cooking, but usually in the evening. I've got. I'm going to the gym later, so I don't really want to be, you know. Three sheets to the wind. Chicken is starting to brown up a little bit, which is fabulous. Um, also, make sure, like you say, on the medium heat, it's when you crank it up too high that it all starts to liquefy and start stewing and getting... I'm just putting that back down to exactly on medium. Um, yeah, if you're too hot, and also it'll dry your chicken out. So... It's better to do it on a lower heat and do it a little bit longer than torch the fuck out of it. We're also going to be adding a cup of cream. If I stand here and let it run out long enough, it will be a cup. Don't worry though, Grievers, I do have another bottle. I've got all the ingredients for all the cooking. The next cooking we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you guys how to make a really easy cheeks paella. <laughs> this is a thick cream, so there's still a bit inside. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of milk in there. Oh, oh while I'm doing this, I'll show you a little 
the tray. Nearly brown. I can still see a few bits of pinkish chicken, so I'm just going to make sure they've all had a good a good go. These, um, I do, again, I'm not advertised, but I, I'm loving the lactose-free milk. I'm not lactose intolerant, but I do prefer this stuff. But these packs, these, bot, these what are they, containers, people pour them with this bit at the bottom, and when you do that, this huge amount usually comes out when they're fairly full, and, and it goes all over your bench tops. Hey, turtle dove, yee-haw! And I, saw, I love all the hacks that you see on YouTube and stuff. And I saw one the other day for these these packs, like the Long Life Milk Packs. They're actually designed... Oh, and by the way, these little circle things, what do we do with them? Before we put anything plastic and circular in our rubbish... We snip that so it doesn't end around the neck of a bird or marine life. But, to cut a long story short, these guys are actually designed, most people pour them with this bit at the bottom and a huge bit flies out. I actually made a mess because I was being a bit silly, but um, they're not actually designed to be poured that way. I've just got to give it a shake too. When you pour out of these, you actually should have this bit at the top. Let me find a cup to pour into. It, look, it feels weird once you start it, because I've only been doing it for a week or two. But that's the way they're meant to be poured, from the top. And if you can see the opening, it's actually shaped, it's thinnest at the bottom bit. And that's why they're meant to be poured from the top. And you don't end up with those gigantic splashes all over your countertop. Do you like that tip, Groovers? All right, we're nearly there. Yep, now it's beautifully browned. It's looking good, Groovers. It's looking good. Oh God! Me and Mike can't cook with a bit of onion on my toast, my top stove top. Yeah, that tip it works, guys. So for those of you who use that stuff, so I just put a little bit of milk in the cream so that we can get the full cup happening. Where's not want not. So now that the chicken is um, browned, and again, these are going to continue to cook in the oven of course so we're going to stick the cup of cream in some people call it pouring cream this is actually thickened cream but it really doesn't matter i needed thickened cream for another recipe so that's what we ended up using we're going to add half a cup of white wine white wine and chicken go together very well and bacon it makes it all yummy yummy and scrummy and then we're just going to season it with some um rock salt the trick to good cooking it's all in the seasoning and some cracked pepper Smells amazing. I love my pepper, I love my salt, I love my seasonings. And then just give that a little mix all together. And then what's going to happen is this is going to thicken slightly. For a couple of minutes we'll just cook it and it'll thicken up a little bit. And then we're going to assemble the pies. Pretty fucking easy. <laughs> clean as you go, clean as you go. So I'm getting my little enamel pie dishes. You can use whatever sort of dishes you want. I um, swear to God though guys, 
if you see these out and about anywhere get them they are like the perfect size for one serve like whatever you're doing if you're doing like a fish pie um, individual shepherd's pies a tuna mornay whatever it might be these this sort of size perfect and these ones you can freeze so you just put some alfoil over the top and then if you've got big ziploc bags i do pop them inside that though to keep freezer burn out but um when you get home one night you don't feel like cooking and you open up your freezer and you're like holy fuck a chicken and bacon pie you just chuck it in the oven and heat it up way to go so this is now bubbling away we're just going to let all the ingredients and everything all blend in together and hopefully it's going to thicken a little bit smell vision oh I wish we did because it does it smells awesome sauce smells amazing and the finished product is going to look like well it's going to look like the thumbnail it's going to look like that And like I said, yeah, I mean, she, even in her little photo, she's done some greens on the side. You can do whatever veggies you like. Or for some people, they'll just be like, well, chicken, bacon, cream and potato. All my favourite food groups are represented. Now, there's not a lot of thickening happening at the moment. You could always chuck in a little bit of corn flour mixed with a tiny bit of water. If you want to thicken it a bit and I do want it to thicken so I'm going to give it another minute and if it doesn't sort it shit out naturally it's only got to thicken slightly I found the cutest vintage Pyrex single serve dishes today you need to you definitely do in your little single serve Pyrex as of course you do in fact, we'll be looking at some other little dishes in a minute when I do the baked mozzarella as well. I like the individual serves. Like, I mean, you could make this as one big fat pie and chuck it on the table with a big bowl of fresh greens, whether they're, you know, veggies or salad greens, and everyone can sort of help themselves, which is how I tend to feed people when they come here. It's... um. My dining room table is all about banquets and feasting and I put all the food out and everyone can just serve up what they want. I don't like being given a gigantic bowl of something and I'm expected to eat it. I like people being able to choose what they want and what quantity. But doing little individual ones is great too, like for lunches and dinners and things like that. And yeah freezing but if you did put this in like a big pie dish and you had leftovers you just serve put it into individual baggies and away you go I collect a bit of vintage Pyrex I haven't got a lot yet but I love my vintage Pyrex mixing bowls I always pull up at garage sales and stuff to see if anyone's got there because for some reason a lot of people don't like vintage Pyrex and then I broke the lid on this which I was gutted it had a glass lid but this baking dish is divine gets used a lot today I broke the lid and then I thanked it and I sent it on its merry way because you know that's what you should do all right that's not really thickening to my liking so I'm taking it off the element because I don't want it to be um, fucked up and I'm just going to get a little bit of corn flour a teaspoon of corn flour and a teaspoon of water and mix them together So 
So yeah, cornflour water, mix it together. Oh, people that don't get it, I know, but isn't it great? Because for the rest of us, all that retro shit that I just love, even like the hard rubbish, the things people put out on that curb, and I'm like, oh my God, I am so having that Papazan chair. <laughs> and just mix that cornflour through, and it will thicken up your sauce a little bit. Turn the element off. I'm just going to pump, pump a bit more heat back into it just so I can activate. A cornflour paste. Cornflour paste activate. I like my pies to have a thick sauce. I'm not a fan of the runny sauce. Why aren't you thickening? I'm going to do another teaspoon. Ah, now she's starting to thicken, but I still want it thicker. Estate sales, vintage quality bonus haunted. <laughs> Okay. There's nothing better than grabbing vintage stuff and you're like, that stuff is so cool, it's going home with me and they're like, thank God that shit's gone. Everyone's a winner. Okay, it's thickened slightly. Beauty. Awesome. Finally. It's still only slightly, but the beauty of these is we're going to be eating them straight out of the tin and it's just an excuse to get a big fat loafy crunch, crunchy loaf of bread and dip it into the sauce as well. And because of the corn flour, it'll probably continue to thicken in the oven. All right, so then we're going to distribute, it has thickened though, slightly. <laughs> You're going to distribute this mix between, well, we're doing four individual pies, but if you're doing one big pie, it's easy. You just chuck it all in. Whatever pie tins you've got. Like I said, you might do two pies. You might, like, two bigger ones. You might do the four. You might even do, like, six little ramekin size. Whatever works for you, groovers. I just wanted to use my enamel pie tins because I love them. Someone, is it you, Francesca? Someone's commented on enamel, my enamel stuff before. Someone in the chat's a fan of enamel. Well, someone in the community, they may not be in the chat right now. Gosh, this smells so yummy. And how easy. Like, honestly. You know, if you wanted to, you could add a few, a few herbs. I've got some amazing stuff growing in my herb garden. You could put some tarragon in it. Some time. Whatever you want, Grievers. But um, it's got enough flavour, I can tell just from the aroma of that white wine. You don't want to drown out the white wine. Now, my little potato that I chopped up earlier has coloured a bit, but that will not ruin the dish um at all but what we want to do now is put the potato on as the lid you can kind of push bits of chicken and stuff down a bit so they're a bit more consistent if you're that fussy everything's rustic in my kitchen so we chuck it together and it all just seems to come together Mm. 
might as well use up the little off cuts to patch a few pieces, a few corners. But you don't want to put too much spud on because it won't get all crispy and yummy. And that leftover spud with the other spuds that I'd peeled and didn't need, um, they will be put in an airtight container and after dark mofo, I'll make fries with them. And I've got some more potatoes to feed us all after we've been roaming the streets of Hobart in the middle of the night. All right, here's some melted butter I made earlier. And you just want to, I think I need more actually, let's see. You want to brush it over the potatoes. Now I've gone a bit nuts on that one. That one's going to have a lot of buttery potato on top. But just melt some butter. This is my mum's little enamel jug that is brilliant for melting butter. But I'm just going to have to melt a tiny bit more. Where are my Tassie girls and guys? Duck River. Deb called it. Hadn't even shown it and Deb mentioned it. Right, so we're just going to melt that butter. And give me a sec. I'm just going out to my herb garden. Washed by the rain. Duck River does rock. What the heck is up, Groovers? Quiet night, day. Is there anyone out there? What do you mean, TD? It's um, Saturday. It's Wednesday. Saturday. It's Wednesday afternoon. Like it's well lunchtime, late lunch. It's nearly two p.m. This is when things go quiet on the YouTube's. Because the UK are asleep, usually. A lot of the people in the US of A are starting to go to bed. This is when the ins insomniacs come out to play. And people in Florida. <laughs> but yeah, if you want crunchy potatoes, you want butter on all of them. And if they don't crisp enough in the oven, we're going to be whacking them in under the gorilla at the end. Um, where's my old baking tray gone? No idea. So we'll use a newer one. Um, it's worth whacking them on baking trays. My big one will, ah, they will fit awesome. Just in case there's any spillage. It doesn't, I don't think there will be with these because they're not filled up to the top. Um, but my secret ingredient that Donna didn't mention, I just went out to my little herb garden and picked some fresh thyme. And I'm just going to pop them on the top. And they'll, um, I'm not going to even bother peeling the little leaves off. I'm literally going to put big sprigs of thyme on them. And while they're cooking, all the butter and everything will get all yummy scrummy and all the flavour of the thyme will spread into the pie as well. Hey, <laughs> Look at me go. Who needs a bit more?
So there's one of them. And into the oven they go. You want the rack to be in the middle or slightly towards the top when you're doing anything where you want a crunchy top. Don't, I mean, mine's a fan for, so the heat's distributed evenly, or it's not actually. My oven's very hot at the back. Um, hey, Google, set a timer for 20 minutes. Um, yeah, if you want crispy tops, a lot of ovens have got elements up the top, so make sure you pop them up high. But what I tend to do is, um, if they don't crispen up naturally in the oven, I just turn the gorilla on and give them a bit of a burst under the grill at the end to crispen up the tops of my pies. So in readiness of having to do that... Everyone's a bit fatigued, Turtle Dove. There's been a lot of people covering um, the Amber Heard interview, and I think that's affected us all. <laughs> I'm taking my boots off. I've got boots on, and I'm getting too hot. It's getting hot in here. This is why I don't bother having heating on on cold days, because I know I'll be in the kitchen and. The heat from the kitchen is more than enough. Interesting waves of energy on YouTube. And also, this is a quiet time. Like, I'll go backstage one day and show you all of my analytics and stuff. And it shows, like, how, what time more people are watching. And sort of 11 a.m. to midday in Australia is my peak time. She did do an interview, Turtle Dove. Um, I don't know how we got through it all too. I think because we laughed our way through it, Francesca. I loved your comment that you sent me. I fully relate. Um, but I think because Johnny gave everyone permission to laugh despite the horror of the subject matter. And this community, as you know, is so supportive and loving and funny. I think that's how we got through it all. So those pies need to cook for like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, it's really just for the potato to cook because everything else is cooked. And you just want to cook them until the potatoes are nice and golden and crispy on the top. So next up we're going to do what I'm actually having for lunch. It's a bit of a late lunch. Yeah, watch my replay, Turtle Dove. <laughs> Don't go looking for it. Watch, I did a reaction to it. It took two hours. We're getting there. We're getting more organised and more structured with the lives, which is awesome. But now I've got to work on brevity. We're just so chatty. I love it. Now I'm only going to make one serving of this because it's really beautiful to have it freshly made. And like I said, I've got dark mofo people. We're going to be coming back here after nights wandering the streets of Hobart, middle of winter, freezing cold, and there's nothing better than some yummy, warm food to eat when you get back so I'm going to bag up those extra potatoes and potato slices and um, I've got more spuds as well and I'll do like a really yummy big serving of hot chips and I'm going to also make this dip as well because it's just so yummy I'll buy a lovely big sourdough loaf that you can literally just rip chunks of bread off it won't be sliced and dip into it so I'm just going to make a single serving and also because the oven's already been used to cook pies and it's going to be hot, might as well use that heat too. So, for these little dishes, there's so many different ways you can cook them and dishes you can use. You could use little ramekins like this, a little one cup capacity ramekin is perfectly fine. These little um, Le Creuset pots are great and I know that... I think still at the moment, if people shop at Coles Supermarket in Australia, if you collect points, you can get um, the KitchenAid versions of these. But these are great little single-serve pots, um, which I, that's probably my preferred one. Or 
there's the same thing but in green or you can use something like this this is another french brand of thing that i don't know i picked up at a garage sale for 50 cents and i'm going to actually use this one just for the visual and also it's about the right size for the lunch that i want i'm having a bit of a late lunch i kind of had a brunch i shoved a brunchy sort of amount of food into my face in between my lives so this will be like my little afternoon snack um and what you can do with serving these if you want you can buy like pita breads and um you pretty much brush them with heaps of olive oil and then sprinkle salt over them rock salt and you bake them like you cut them into strips and just bake them on a baking tray in the oven for about five minutes on a hot oven like a 200 degrees or a 390 fahrenheit oven and make crunchy you did miss this pile of gold turtle dove and yeah i did do a reaction i mean it takes two hours but you could put it on accelerated because i think we had a lot of fun with it um but i happen to have already opened and partly eaten by my sister and i when she was here um these beautiful lavash but they're crispy and they're the perfect thing to dip into this dish so that's what i'm having so any sort of crisp bready type things um you could like i said make get some um pita breads and brush them with oil slice them up sprinkle with salt bake them in the oven for about five minutes on 200 degrees or 390 fahrenheit pretty hot oven and they'll crispen up and you can dip them but even fresh bread is fantastic so what i'm going to do because i will be making this dish um tomorrow when we all come home i'm going to make up the tomato bit now using my little vintage vintage pyrex bowl and you want a 400 gram tin of diced crushed any sort of tomatoes i like the diced crushed is great like whatever you want and just whack that into a bowl if you were just making it for one you could um just literally put it all straight into your little whatever you're baking it in and just mix it up with a little spoon but i'm just going to make a big mix because we'll be having it later tomorrow um again we want a crushed clove of garlic and because i forgot to buy it i've resorted to my emergency garlic supply that lives in my fridge honestly though guys if you don't cook a lot and you've got a recipe and you need to buy a bulb of garlic don't buy one of these keep it in your fridge and you will not throw out a huge bulb of garlic that's dried out sitting in your kitchen just waiting to be loved uh, once again we're going to be putting some tasman sea salt but you guys can use whatever salt you want but don't use that horrible powdery white shitty like do the chunky salt guys get into the sea salts and the rock salts so much better for you or even like the himalayan you can even put pink salt in it doesn't really matter this is so easy it's ridiculous and it's so delicious it's incredible cracked pepper give that all a mix that fucking easy then grab yourself at the uh, deli or wherever one of these big blobs of mozzarella you can also use bocconcini cheese um, you can use the little balls like whatever you've got in your fridge you might have these sorts of cheeses sitting around like whatever you want but this stuff's great and I'll tell you why if you don't use all of it before it's used by date and the use by date is the 16th of October before you open it um, I mean we're gonna eat this all in the next 24 hours 
um, use within 72 hours of opening the bag. And if you don't use it within 72 hours of opening the bag, keep this outer plastic thing, like always keep the, this, stick it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. And the next time you use, you do a recipe and you need mozzarella, pull it out of your freezer, let it defrost and away you go again. You can freeze this stuff. Same with little tubs. If you've got little tubs of bocconcini balls or baby mozzarellas or whatever, they can be frozen as well. And if you do buy something like this and then you're looking in your cheese drawer and you're like, shit, I forgot to make that thing with the mozzarella and it still hasn't reached its use by date, just chuck the whole thing like it is into the freezer and it will be fine and dandy the next time you use it. Don't chuck it out. <laughs> All right. But it's going to be eaten within 72 hours in this household. And I often find too, if you do a dish that's got mozzarella and you don't use the whole thing up, it's a good excuse to have pizza or potato bake or, you know, any sort of bake. Like when you open something and you don't use it all up, there's your, there's your clue to find another recipe where you can finish it all up. Or freeze it. Yes, people, freeze your cheese. Freeze your cheese. So what you want to do is um, use a piece of, get a piece of bock. Now this is a 500 gram blob. It's huge. And obviously for a single serve like this amount, you don't need a heap. So I'm literally just going to pull off a piece about that size. Ratio wise, I'm kind of happy with that. And using my grandmother's gravy ladle, which is a tiny bit tarnished and needs another polish. <laughs> Let's get posh in the kitchen, everyone. Put in a little bit of the tomato in the bottom. Whack on your blob of cheese. Put some more tomato around it. You don't want it filled to the brim. You don't want it leaking in your oven. That's like a reasonable size for lunch. As late as my lunch is, I was a bit messy with my grandmother's ladle. I blame her. And then I popped out earlier and got some fresh oregano or oregano, as some of you would say. Oh, you like this camera angle? Awesome. Yeah, I, I like And it's really easy to set up. The camera's actually sitting on top of my KitchenAid. It's easy. <laughs> um, and I can adjust it a bit. So, yeah. Thank you for the feedback, Francesca. Um, but, yeah, I got some of my own oregano. Now, this does cook at 200 degrees. The pies are currently cooking at 180 but what I'm going to do is just whack it in the oven now because this is my lunch and um, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook, but it's you might as well use up the same electricity. Like, don't wait for your pies to finish cooking if you're going to do something like this as well, even though it's not at the right temperature. And if the pies come out, we'll then whack it, whack it up to 20, like whack it up to 200 for the last five minutes or whatever. Um, but this literally needs about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. So... And really all we're relying on is that cheese to melt. And I'm going to put this on the tray under where the pies are, so it's going to make it a real hot spot. But again, I'm grabbing a tray because that mozzarella, when it melts, it could all overflow. That's a better angle? <laughs> Which? But that's actually now falling off a bit. Look, you get all the angles. Oh, I always forget to do that. My God, the pies are bubbling like there's no tomorrow. I didn't take my glasses off. Now I'm blind, everybody. But yeah, so, I mean, you've got me doing some chopping action. If Sunny comes back in, I'll show you her. Then we can do the long distance bench. We can do what's cooking on the stove. I mean, it's all happening, guys. It's all happening. 
But how easy is this little tomato bake? And honestly, it's so amazing and so delicious. And you just think, God, all the time I've had stuff like this sitting around in my kitchen and I could have made it and I didn't. I don't know what angle you like now, Francesca, and it's all starting to fall over anyway, so. But yeah, I'm gonna be eating the tomato bake, mozzarella and tomato bake with these yummy crisp breads. They're yummy lavash that have poppy seeds in them and salt on the outside. They're delicious. Focus camera. Show the lavash. There we go. Oh, you're, you left to go and watch and you, you couldn't wait. I'm nearly done. Once the pies are done and I can show them off, we've got the baked cheese and mozzarella are now cooking away. I'm just checking on a t separate timer for the cheese because I chat so much and I forget things like, you know, your food is burning. Oh, this is what your little, very simple. I'm, I'm ripping out pages and doing recipes. I've got so many magazines floating around my house. It's like, just get on with cooking through them one by one. And this is a Donahue winter magazine from fuck knows how long ago. Um, 2008. <laughs> it's a very loved, it's filthy actually, but it's loved. And there's s'mores that we might make down on the um, fire pot. I'm going to make a cheesy damper, on, cook it on a stick on the fire pot and do a billy of tea soon. The next day we have a beautiful day with the sun out. It'll be cold, but no rain happening. I'm going to light my fire pot. And when I've got some really beautiful amb embers, embers, when I've got some ember herds happening, I'm going to cook damper. And we'll, it'll just be a chat, but while we're chatting, I'm going to show you how to cook damper on a stick. And it's going to be cheesy damper. Mm. A very Aussie thing. Uh, but also coming up soon in the Shitty Kitty Kitchen, the next thing I'll be going live to cook is I'm going to be making a cheats paella. You like marshmallow? Yeah, so we'll do some um, s'mores as well. Bit of fire pot cooking. Um, but the next thing I'll be doing from the kitchen is going to be a cheats paella with chorizo and, or chorizo and no seafood or anything like that. Again, really affordable, really delicious, um, very easy, one pot wonder, perfect weeknight thing if you don't feel like, you know, standing over a hot stove and cooking for hours you can make it in advance and just heat it up when you get home or you can make it on the spot it will probably take without being live on youtube um half an hour to make it max so that's what will be happening next unless we do the fire pot cooking and we'll be doing cheesy damper a billy of tea and some s'mores Because they're in the book. I'm cooking the book. We're cooking Donna Hayes 2008 Winter Magazine, um, volume or issue 39. Issue 39. And I've got contemporary Donna's. Like I've got a lot of Donna to cook. I'm standing here going, but I'm all done. I want to start packing up my kitchen. But that's not very entertaining for you guys. I might put a few things away. I'll put a few things away. But the beauty too of this little, um, oh God, I have to show off, guys. You know how I mentioned the Tasman sea salt in my little salt pig over there, which is so yummy? These lavosh are the best lavosh in the world. Like, I'm very proud of Tassie, and I know we have amazing food here, but I'm never going to say it's the best unless it really is. 
these lavosh i don't know mainlanders if you see these anywhere grab them they're about seven bucks but you'll get several like we've never unless i've had a group of people eating a whole packet in one sitting they are fucking insane <laughs> sponsor me tasman so sea salt if i was going to be sponsored by anyone i want it to be these guys <laughs> yeah baby great shit great shit Hello there. Hey Google, stop. My house smells incredible, guys. I like Amber because she makes me feel like the sameest lady in the Western Hemisphere. Also love this calming vibe tour. Also vintage everything. It's the little things. It is. And you didn't know you could freeze cheese. Now, you can't freeze all cheese. Always Google machine, but your white sort of mozzarellas, bocconcini, stuff like that. Most cheese doesn't last in my house long enough to be frozen. Like you can't cheat um you can't freeze camembert and brie, for example. So it's not all white cheeses. So just always Google. I only found out the other day you can freeze pate. I got an amazing pate when my sister came over, not the last time, but the time before, and she rocked up with a pate as well. So we and hers was in a little plastic tub, so we froze hers. Alright, let's see what these pies are doing. And this show's had everything turtled up. I even sliced off my finger. I mean, Amber Heard sliced off my finger. Oh, you freeze brie and camembert? Well, fuck, maybe you can. I didn't know that. There you go. Here's me being all, I'm the authority and I don't, didn't know. There you go. Okay, these are hot as fuck, guys. And they do need a little bit more crisping on top, so I'm gonna. Oh, and that cheese is starting to melt. My god, this house smells so good. I've just put the gorilla on, <laughs> and I'm just gonna crispen up the potato tops. neighbor <laughs> very early neighbor five not two fifteen um big things sometimes leave me I agree it can be overwhelming I freeze bring camembert we'll see there I've learned something I didn't know mind you brain camembert has never lasted long enough in my house for me to google can you freeze it <laughs> I'm cereal. This is like Zen meditation. Awesome. That's what we want, Turtle Dove. We'll wait for the tops of those pies to crispen up a bit. And then because there's four of them on a tray in the under the griller, I'll just pull one of them out to show you what they're like. But they are going to be my dinner. Well, I mean, I pull the whole tray out, but I'll bring one up close. Here's one I prepared earlier. And with my dinner tonight, um, I've got some zucchini and some fennel that I have to cook. So I'm thinking of doing a, like a ratatouille, but instead of having onion, I'm going to do fennel, zucchini and tomato and have that with the chicken pies. And I've got some fresh baby spinach as well. Oh, Francesca, thank you. I've gained so much from having this channel. Like, I, it fills my creative urge. I miss being on radio, so I sort of feel like I'm still talking into a microphone when I get to talk about shit.
This inspires me to clean my kitchen and live your best life. It's like if Martha Stewart was funny and cool. Thank you. That's a massive compliment. My kitchen's only sparkling because I've discovered Co. And I do prep before I go live. So, you know, there was some, um, a packet of Bircher. I'm making this today as well for breakfast for the next few days. Um, it's a pepperberry chai and seed Bircher muesli that my sister gave me for my birthday. And you need to grate an apple, but that bag and apple was sitting on the bench. Like this, you know, I did, I did clear it. And my kettle, which is over here, isn't usually here. It's usually where the camera is. And you're ten minutes behind on the screen, on the stream. <laughs> Welcome back. But yeah, I mean, I, I do try to keep my kitchen pretty tidy because it's sort of the hub of the house, and I do hang out here a lot with friends and family anyone who visits gets fed force fed by me so it's always clean but it can there can be shit on benches oh i set a timer so i wouldn't forget about the cheese that's got another five minutes now the pies are bubbling away under the gorilla i've never made these before so i will do a taste test spinning them around a bit still waiting for them to crisp but I noticed one of the people who blogged this recipe said that um they they should have waited for the potato to crisp and more but they couldn't wait because it smelled so good <laughs> good morning my Jo 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 good morning and early Eve I'm up early sounds delicious Yes, well, the pies are nearly done and the little lunch snack thing that I'm making that I'll be eating at 2.30 in the afternoon is kind of like a little afternoon tea. But um, this is really a good, the cheese that you're going to see in a minute is such a great alternative to, you know, your usual toasted sandwiches. I mean, the benefit from working from home is you can put something like this together and whack it in the oven and have it for lunch. But if you're going to do a cheese and tomato toasted sandwich, why not do a little baked one? and dip crisp breads into it. Your chat game is weak as heck tonight. Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit like that too. It smells so good I can't wait for it to finish cooking. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. I'm so excited to be doing some cooking again, guys. Like, I kind of feel in summer with salads, I'm like, would you guys really be interested in salads? And then I eat all these incredible salads, and I'm like, why don't you go live and show them how to make these incredible salads? So I'll do that a bit more next summer. But every time I cook, I'm like, just put your camera on now that I know I can literally spin my kitchen aid and uh, kitchen aid around, because my um, camera's on a Joby, which has got like adjustable legs. Um, they're all bendy and they just grip onto shit. You usually have a drink, yeah? I'm having a nice coffee. <laughs> I've got to go to the gym this afternoon. I don't want to go smelling like a brewery. But I'll definitely be having a glass of wine with that chicken pie tonight. And then um, Finn and I are going to be live tonight doing Batshit 29. It's all friggin' happening, guys. They're nearly picture perfect crispy up, so I'm going to keep letting them crisp a little bit longer. And the tomato, I'm just going to crank the oven up to 200 and give that a bit longer. In fact, what I might do is I'm going to take the pies out. I might turn the oven off and swap it and put the cheese up under the gorilla. That's what I'm going to do. A 
upstate New York isn't recognizing summer this year. It's been chilly. We've got a mountain of snow. It's Shady Man. Shady Man. Oh, sorry. I did say Shady Man. Well, no, sorry. Sorry. I saw Mojo. Is Shady Man here too? Shady Man um, will be featuring prominently in tonight's Batshit. Shady Man sent me two things for Batshit and they've both made the list. Only so I don't have to find any, like I only have to find a couple of stories. I better touch base with Finn and check he's good to go for tonight too. Plus I've got my laptop is just here and it's in the corner and it's uh, like standing fully upright because it's one of those laptops that can open out to like, you know, flatten out. And it's standing and I can read chat easily. I do like this setup. You don't get to see my face, but I don't think that's a bad thing. You see my face enough. Oh my God, they smell amazing. All right. It's time for them to come out. I'll let them cool down a tiny bit. I swear to God, guys, that homegrown oregano. Oh no, it's time. I'm swapping out the tomato and the cheese because that just needs to be finished off. Um, some of the potatoes are a little bit burnt on the edges, but that to me is delicious. It just adds to the flavour. And they're piping hot, but when they've cooled down a little bit, I am going to take a bite out of one of them, the one that I have for dinner, so I can do a taste test for you. But check out this little demon. Look at it. It's all caramelizy and that looks burnt, but it's actually just a very, very dark brown. It's not like charcoal. Yum. And there's bits of butter floating around. There's butter still all puffing up on the potato. Yum. And with some yummy fresh greens on the side, like it's a little green salad or some green veggies or the little ratatouille that I'm going to make and have some fresh baby spinach as well. I'm having a good dinner. Perfect dinner to have before we do batshit. Finn and I are always frantically, well, I no, he's not now. If he's at, well, actually he's at home. He and I are always frantically cooking and shoving food in our faces literally five minutes before we go live. <laughs> he's a good cook too. Finn should do some cooking on his channel. So you want a bit of crunch on your potato tops. But what an easy little pie. Um really quick like yeah i've been live for an hour and 20 but honestly that was so easy to make you'd already be eating it delayed gratification not your strong point well i'm keeping an eye on the cheese that i'm baking at the moment which is what i am going to be eating when i end this live but i want these to cool down a bit before i taste them otherwise i'm going to burn the crap out of my mouth but yum guys look at them i think mine are prettier than donna's who wore it better? Bearing in mind hers is styled. That's Donna's. And this is ours. I like ours better. Because it's got a homegrown herb on the top. She didn't even put any herbs on hers. That's not good styling. And the cheese has just come out too. It's bubbling like a demon. I'm just going to get some oregano. My beautiful homegrown herb garden is featured in both dishes today. But I'm just going to get some leaves are happening. You'd eat it for breakfast? Yeah, why not? That's what I loved about living in Vietnam. We often had, you know, very big savoury breakfasts, um, curries, and obviously you have pho. Um, I might as well take all these leaves off while I'm here because I'll put a little bit of plastic over the top of this. Actually, not plastic. I've got little, um, they are plastic, but they're, you know, reusable plastic lids. 
and that will be handy for tomorrow when we all get home. I'm driving, so I'll be sober, but it'll still be handy to have all this stuff ready to go. Because I'm going to make a giant one of these and get a big, fresh, crusty sourdough, sourdough loaf tomorrow. And I've got a lot of potatoes. I'm going to do a big batch of um, duck fried or duck roasted chips. Duck fat roasted potato chips. Hot fries. So there's my beautiful oregano. <laughs> um... So here's my little tomato and uh, mozzarella bake and I put it under the grill so it's got a little bit of crunchy mozzarella on the top and then to garnish this for lunch you want to drizzle a tiny little bit of olive oil on top of it that's the secret ingredient hang on am I in this shot So yeah, for the topping of it, just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top, like so. We've got some fresh oregano out of the garden. And I always like to add cracked pepper on top of things that I make, because I just think it makes it look really pretty. And even though it was seasoned, a little sprinkle of sea salt. And there you have it, guys. An alternate to making a toasted sandwich for lunch. Just bake the mozzarella and the little tomato, which was really simple. It was tomato, garlic, salt and pepper, pretty much. Um, and then bake it, bit of fresh herbage on top and some cracked salt pepper. And we're going to try that in a second. It's really hot. But that's what I'm going to eat when we rock, when we end this. But yeah, just something a little bit different for lunch. And most people will have a tin of tomatoes in their pantry. Um, like if you buy that garlic in a jar, that's good to go in your fridge. Salt and pepper. And if you need to, just pop out and get some mozzarella or some bocconcini cheese. And away you go. Oops. We beat you to it. But first, let's do a taste test of the chicken pa. Because I give everything a score out of 10 on this channel. And I never, well, I rarely make things I've made before. So um, you guys are always guinea pigs. I'll have this pie for dinner, but I'm going to try taste test this pie first. And yeah, tonight, just to make it a bit bigger of a meal. Not much bigger though. Like, I don't like huge servings anymore. So if you're in a household with, you know, a big, strong man, you probably would have filled this pie dish up to the top and made one less individual pie. I want to get a bit of everything. So I've got some chicken, some bacon. And I'm going to get a piece of potato. Oh my god, guys, too, have a look at the sauce. It's all, um, can you see the sauce? It's all buttery and whiny and creamy and... <gasps> you told your mum about the pumpkin soup? Yeah, well, I had um, three more served. I had that served that night. And then I've had two served since. And when my sister came, I sent her home with four serves and I froze two as well. It went a long way and it was delicious. It was really good. Especially on day, like when it's one and two days old. I still feel like I'm going to burn my mouth on this. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. It's hot, but oh my God. Mm, 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 mm. Holy shit, guys. Yum. Mmm. Okay. Sorry. 
Yeah, the cashews in the soup made it amazing because even um, on day three, they were still crunchy. I still had some crunch to them. Holy shit, guys, this pie. Interesting she didn't put any herbs. I mean, I did put my homegrown thyme on the top of it. Um, but it is so delicious because of the white wine. So this was onion, garlic and bacon, chicken, white wine, cream, salt and pepper, potatoes brushed with a little bit of butter. Really easy. It reminds me of, um, oh, the chicken is so tender. That is divine. Um, what's the French dish with the chicken and wine and cream? You know the one. <laughs> Was it Cordon Bleu? No. Oh, it's that chicken casserole that's got white wine. It's a classic. That's what it tastes like. And then you've got the crunchy bits of potato on top as well. Cock of van, that's it. Yeah, so it's like a cock of van filling. And then the crunchy potatoes on top. It's absolutely delicious. And the fact that you don't have to fuck around with the pastry. You just make up the base and then chuck the potatoes on top. Super easy. I'm giving this... And this is so good, I'm almost tempted to eat this now. <laughs> it's your dinner, Tori. It doesn't matter, I've got three more of them. Like I said at the start too, guys, these leftovers, if you don't get to eating them, seal them with some alfoil, aluminium foil, and then if you've got a big sandwich Ziploc bag, whack it inside that. But even without, just with the foil, just make sure it's sitting flat in your freezer. You'll get home from work one day and you'll be like, fuck, I'm so hungry and cold. And I don't feel like cooking and you're going to open up your freezer and find one of these little fuckers and it's going to be the best thing ever. And if you've got some frozen beans or peas or something like that in your freezer, you know, cook some of them up as well and there's dinner done. But I'm going to give those out of 10. They're a, what did I do for the soup the other day? That was 500 out of 10. Yum, the flavours in that are incredible and it was so simple. 500 out of 10 for them as well. All right. Now this little fucker that I am going to eat now for lunch. With the um, crisp breads. It's like a little fondue grievers. Now, I haven't made this particular one before, but I have made a lot of baked cheeses. Um, I do a lot of baked breeze and camemberts. But I've got my cute little pate knife. Because I want to make sure I get some of this gluggy, stringy mozzarella. Look at that, guys. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Uh-oh. How do you snap it off? <laughs> Where are the boys? There we go. Oh my God, guys. It's all stringy and gluggy. And get a little bit of it. It's the tomato and my freshly grown oregano. Don't burn your mouth. Thank you. Here we go, guys. Yum. Yum. Mm -mm. What can I say? It's sweet from the tomato, the cracked pepper and the fresh oregano give it a really nice savoury kick. The mozzarella is gluggy, stringy, even a little bit caramelised. And so easy. So like for some of you guys, if you've got families and you do a bit of cooking during the day, Make this little snack and whack it in the oven while you're cooking your lasagna or whatever it might be. And have this healthy little afternoon snack or lunch. I mean, this is something I would have for dinner. If I got home and I was like, oh, I just want something light and easy. I've always got a tin of tomatoes in my pantry. I've always got 
mozzarella floating around the house. Uh, if you had like pre-grated mozzarella, you could sort of form that into a ball to shove in there or you could just sprinkle it on the top. Did you snap or butt dial your wrench? What did for his Francesca been butt dialing everyone? No, oh, she's been deleting <laughs> messages. <laughs> Francesca, you're hilarious. And all, so is, Mo, is Mojo actually timed out? Oh, no, if you're not. Mm. Guys, this is so yummy. It's so simple. It's so delicious. It's beautiful, wintry food. If you have a dinner party and you're thinking about doing a cheese platter at the end of dinner, don't bother. It's a lot of money. People buy 50 different cheeses and all kinds of dried biscuits and whatever. Seriously, do a nice big serving of this if you've got a lot of people coming. This is a single serve, but I've got plenty of tomato here for tomorrow. And in fact, I'll probably double it. Add another tin of tomatoes, a bit more garlic, some salt and pepper. Mix that up again. But there's still quite a lot in here. And then get a nice packet of crisp breads. Or like I said earlier, you could make some Lebanese pitters. Just brush them in olive oil and stick them in the oven at 200 degrees for about five minutes. Cut them into strips first and they'll crispen up. And instead of spending a fortune on a cheese platter at the end of your meal, serve this gluggy, tomato-y... I mean, look at it. And that wasn't a gigantic blob of mozzarella. And it's so delicious and fresh. And it's hearty and warm. Damn, guys, honestly, look at it. Look at it. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. So on that note, I'm going to go, oh, this, this is 500 out of 10 too. <laughs> I've loved them all equally. I love the complex flavours that abounded in that spicy pumpkin soup the other night with the cashews and the spinach and everything else in it, it was amazing. I love the cockavan flavour in the filling of those pies and those crunchy bits of potato are just absolutely epic. This spoon, oh, the, my little ladle. Yeah, it's my grandma's little ladle. <laughs> um, her gravy ladle. And then this one, for the absolute boldness of flavours, even though it's incredibly simple and how easy it is to make. And like I said, if you're cooking something in the oven, like you're getting a roast on or whatever, you're a little bit hungry just make this little snack up it'll fill you up it feels incredible it feels incredible it tastes incredible feast your eyes on my gluggy garlic bobs okay <laughs> we will presentation is on point so yeah and guys both of the recipes the links are below even though this live has gone for an hour and 40 minutes we've been chatting and having a lot of fun um you could make both of those dishes in under half an hour this one especially this is like a, a part the, the cooking is the longest part of this one um you could even just chuck that straight under your grill but not on full bore i put it under full bore just to get that yummy caramelized bit of mozzarella at the end but i'm going to log off so i can finish this while it's hot but yeah even if you had a friend over for lunch a little one of these for each person cheap as and absolutely delicious simple wintry i'm going to make this the next time my sister comes down we'll go for a walk on the beach and we'll come back here all you know pores open cold cheeks and i'll serve this up and um we'll be happy as little pigs in poo so until next time this channel is way better than skillshare awesome but yes recipes for both are in the description so they're super easy to make they're cheap and affordable. They're both friggin' delicious. Um, as always, I'm going to download this live and crop it so that each recipe will be in a short, you know, 10 or 20 minute kind of video. 
that then will be uploaded to the shitty kitty kitchen so if you're not a um member or not a member a subscriber yet to the shitty kitty kitchen that's the library where all of these lives and recipes go and i do shorter versions and i also file them all on playlists according to the season and also the style of what's going on so this for example will also be on the vegetarian one and that one will be on chicken and i think i've even got pies i think pies have got their own heading too but you're awesome might see some of you tonight for bat shit and yes well it's not that shiny now it's got cooking stuff happening on it but don't you worry francesca i'll be coing it in a minute but i love you guys thank you so much for um hanging out with me and if you ever do try these recipes let me know put a comment under these videos so i can um see how you found them and yeah pop over and check out the shitty kitty kitchen too because there's a heap of things on there so if it's summer where you are you'll probably find some really lush summer recipes that you can make now but until next time stay groovy everyone have a great afternoon if you're in australia and if you're in other parts of the world good morning good evening g'day g'day groovers see you again very soon